Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed products. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black deck titled Sea Squad, which features Seagate Stormcaller as one of its build-around cards, two mana for a 2-1 human wizard, that when it enters a battlefield lets us copy the next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 2 or less that we cast, and we can choose new targets for the copy, and then if we kicked the Stormcaller for an additional 4 and a blue, we get to copy that spell twice instead. So just an excellent value creature that has a lot of great combos in the deck, in particular the combo with the village rights is great, since on turn 3 we can play Stormcaller, play village rights, sacrifice Stormcaller to the village rights to draw 2, and since we get to copy it, we get to draw 4 cards instead, so 2 cards in order to draw 4 for just 3 mana is a pretty good deal. And then this deck also happens to be a Lures of the Dream Den companion deck, so in the late game we can potentially get back Stormcallers from the graveyard as well. And then the reason the deck is titled Sea Squad is because we're also playing the full playset of Whisper Squad as a 1 mana 1 1 that for 1 on a black lets us search up an additional copy of a card named Whisper Squad and put it on the battlefield tapped, so it gives us additional sacrifice fodder for village rights. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have a small kicker theme with the full playset of Into the Royal, alongside the full playset of Roost of Drakes, which can start generating a Drake tokens as an extra win condition, and we can also potentially get it back from the graveyard with our Lures of the Dream Den, even with Kicker. Into the Royal with Kicker also still works with the Stormcaller, since the converted mana cost will still be 2, so those all synergize quite nicely with each other. And then taking a look at our curve, this is a more accurate representation, since Stormcaller is usually a turn 3 play. At 1 mana we also have the full playset of Opt as another cheap instant to scry one and draw a card. Then we've got Bloodchief's Thirst, which can kill a creature with converted mana cost two or less and can also kick it for four mana total, in which case we can kill any creature or planeswalker, so also synergizes with our Roost of Drakes package. And then two copies of Cling to Dust, shines against any decks trying to mill us, as we can potentially play the Cling to Dust out of the graveyard for free thanks to escape, and can also find opposing graveyard strategies. Then our full place of the Village Rites and Whisper Squad. And then at 2 mana we've got Heartless Act as additional spot removal to complement our Blood Chief's Thirst. And Agonizing Remorse to take a look at the opponent's hand. Can also be devastating if we can copy it with our Stormcaller in the late game. And then besides our 4 copies of Stormcaller we also have 4 copies of Rooster Drakes, 4 copies of Into the Royal. Which we can play for 2 mana or potentially kick it for 4 mana to also draw a card and bounce an opposing permanent and then Extinction Event as our Sweeper of Choice, which can also come in handy, and we can still play it despite having Lurs as Companion. And then going over the mana base, we don't have any colorless lanes, because we do have some pretty strict color requirements, with cards like Bloodchief's Thirst being double black, and needing double blue for Into the Royal Kicked and Roost of Drakes, so that's why we have four copies of Temple of Deceit, comes into play tapped, lets us cry one, and then our four copies of our blue-black pathway, eight swamps and eight islands, could potentially play Castle Lochthwain in a mana base as well, but our deck already has a ton of card draw, so it's usually not going to be all that necessary, and uh, with only 8 swamps it's going to come into play tapped quite a bit otherwise. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Facing Murfolk Windrobber. Do I want to just thirst it right now? Extinction events on odd could definitely be an important play this game. So maybe I play it slow. And what I keep on top doesn't matter because they're gonna mill it. And in fact, milling Stormcaller is good for me because then we have it in the graveyard for lures. Alright, they have the turn to Thought Thief. So that one I do want to kill with thirsts. And then keep my extinction events on odd for later. And, uh, yeah, I think we just kill it now, and then we can cling to dust as well. And then Remorse can check for a counter spell to make sure my extinction event resolves. And Gargoyle. Oh, 
into the story can go. And do I want to play Whisper Squad? When I'm probably going to Extinction Event on Odd? Although I guess we could take a different approach and Extinction Event on Even if they play second Gargoyle. I can keep the Gargoyles at bay by escaping Cling to Dust a bunch, I suppose. So maybe it's not a concern. Interesting spot. I guess we'll play the squad. And if I don't draw land, casting the village rights to sack squad is a way for me to find more mana to cast everything I need. Alright, so for now we can Extinction Events. But maybe gonna try and draw into a counter spell here to win the game on the spots if they find a Drown. But they do not. And I could attack, but if they have another Thought Thief I'm gonna regret it, so we'll just stay back. The one damage probably doesn't matter. They did find an into the story, that's too bad. Take three. So we can go Kicked Roost or Stormcaller Village Rites. And then the question is whether I sack Stormcaller itself or Squad. Keeping Squad in play to get additional copies is nice, but Stormcaller lines up a bit better against uh, Enforcer. Yeah, I'll send for one. And then go Stormcaller plus Rites, the squad. Alright, and then we found a backup squad. Thirst would be fine, although I'm sure it's gonna get milled. Another into the story. Opponent's not messing around. Yeah, I would love to start escaping Cling to Dust to reduce the cards in my graveyard, but haven't really had the time to do so. So now what? I kicked Roost and Opt to find lanes. Or I could start escaping. Although I don't think my opponent's gonna cast another into the story anytime soon. I guess we'll start with opts. If my opponent is holding a drown, I guess I don't want to necessarily tap out. And I would rather just cling to dust end of turn. So they don't get to use their mana. If this is a Thought Thief, it's a different story, but... Could also just get a bunch of squads. Should have two left in the deck. Opponent keeps up a bunch of mana. Thirst seems fine. Well, what we could do is just play Roost of Drakes for one mana. Instead of kicking it. Since we have all these kicker cards in hand anyway. Don't hate that. Resolves.
resolves. And then... I guess we'll just pass. Could also into the Royal my own Roost of Drakes. Just so we can pick it back up. And replay it with Kicker. Alright, they're gonna bounce my Roost, so I guess that kind of works if they don't counter this. And even if they do, I still get two Drakes. And this would fizzle the Brazen Borrower. Although this is probably getting countered. Alright, and my opponent concedes. I guess they must not have had a Drown in the Loch to counter my... Into the Royal, I get two Drakes, get to pick up Roost again. If they don't get their Brazen Borrower. And we slowly take over from there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one. Probably want to get the tap land out of the way and then turn two I can play Whisper Squad. Keep up Vil tries if they try and kill it. Although ideally wait until turn three to Stormcall or Village Rites. Aspirants. I guess I could just remorse now and have a look. Alright, so a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck, take their only three drop. Well, that was a pretty good draw. And they get to play their tap land. Alright, can I afford to Stormcall or Village Rites this turn? Maybe. I mean, if I draw into a Blood Chief's Thirst, I could go Stormcall or Thirst and kill two creatures next turn, which would be pretty strong. And at the very least, Stormcall or Into the Royal buys me more time. Yeah, I think I go for it. Heartless Acts. Doesn't work if their creatures have counters on them. So we're at seven. Yes, I'm gonna have to storm color into the royal and bounce two things. And what do we bounce? Probably lieutenants. And then what makes more sense? Mentor. So we're going to take 6 down to 1. Second Heartless Act Mentor while it doesn't have any counters on it. And then I can still Squad to Chump or I can bounce Aspirant. So now takedown doesn't kill anything.
Alright, right is not a bad draw. So I can put lures in hands. Although then I can't get another Whisper Squad and sacrifice the one in play. So maybe that's better. And then I can cling to dust first. And drew another squad. I guess I lose to another removal spell on the squad at the moment. So playing another one slightly safer. And then I can still search one up on village rights. And then we want to search it before we cast the village right, so we are less likely to draw another squad. And then probably kill Bosri's lieutenants, otherwise they're gonna start making tokens if we kill their stuff. And next one we can start recurring Whisper Squads, so we hopefully don't die. Alrighty, so what's in the graveyard? Can also get back Stormcallers. So I guess that's a pretty good turn here. Could also gain a bunch of life. But I would rather draw some cards here. Alright, and then we can still activate Whisper Squad. Sadly, Ambush deals with Lurus. But Extinction Event can deal with both of the opponent's creatures. And a stone coil also neatly is dealt with thanks to extinction events. So that was quite a blowout. Don't think there's any haste creatures I need to play around. And then we'll save Stormcaller to combo with maybe a cling to dust next turn. Ooh, 6-6 six, six stone coil. Could be a problem. I mean, gaining three doesn't really make a huge difference, so I think we just need to draw removal. Roosts? Roost isn't bad. Guess I'll keep it. And another roosts, alright. Still a little bit risky if they find a removal spell for one of my drakes. I would still be dead. And aspirants 
still not lethal. We can quadruple block. All right, so how do we feel about drawing cards with a Stormcaller? Can I kick Stormcaller? Let's see, seven mana. And then I guess I don't have the mana for Kling anymore. Although I would get two Drakes. I guess unkicked Stormcaller and then Kling is fine. And we'll get rid of into the Royal. Want to keep creatures in the graveyard, although I guess now that Lurus is gone, it doesn't matter too much. In fact, I probably should have uh, exiled my non creatures so I can draw more with killing, but getting three is still kind of nice. It means I don't have to chum block right away. Alright, and then I could cling again, but we can save that for next turn. So, alright, put on packs it in, cling to dust was going to draw me an extra card. And then, yeah, if we find any more kicker cards with double roost in play, we're going to pull ahead. So, yeah, very close game against green-white counters. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Only two lands, but I've got all the cards I want. Just need to hit a few land drops and we're good to go. Turn one sample of Triumph, <laughs> another roost. Is this a game where I just play Roost on turn one? It might be. I guess it is, because I just did. Another Temple of Triumph. I right, just need to find a second blue source and we're good. So it looks like a more controlling red-white deck. Alright. I guess we'll put Lurus in hand for now. And then it's just Rooster Drakes until the end of time. Idyllic Tutor gets an Outlaw's Merriment. Well, Into the Royal is a pretty good answer to those. Rush Taunter. Alright. So I guess they're playing a bunch of damage based sweepers to combo with Brash Taunter. Still fine to into the Royal, do it main phase in case I find a land. Although my opponent's likely packing some sweepers to deal with all these Drake tokens. There's the first one. Um, yeah, I guess we want to draw some cards. Stormcaller into village rights will do. And then I can still play an unkicked roost if I want to. Although we are starting to run low on kicker cards. So maybe just play Whisper Squad and then discard something to hand size. Nah, I'll play the Roost. Still have two kicker cards with Thirst and Into the Royal, so we should be fine. Can technically kick Stormcaller as well. And what does Tudor get? Another Merriment, alright. 
this triggers beginning of upkeep, so probably gonna bounce it now. And we'll have a look. Double taunter, double merriment, prophecy. Yeah, I'll we'll take a merriment, I guess. One drake down, and now we don't get to know whether or not they put a Brash Taunter on the bottom. Another Stormcaller. Can always play Kick Stormcaller just to make three drakes, which doesn't sound bad. If I play Lurus, I can get back Stormcaller. This is going to be seven mana total. Gonna need another sweeper here. Nah, I mean, we can rebuild. We have the technology, and they finally gave me a target for my thirst as well. Now is the time to strike. Sadly, a bit light on black mana, but I guess that's manageable. Retreat and regroup. So I could take it, and then next turn have another target for thirsts. Seems acceptable. They did keep one Brash Taunter, which is not too surprising. Got a few options, but just attacking, thirsting the 2-1 seems reasonable. And then I guess we can also Extinction Event to Brash Taunter. And they'll need yet another sweeper. So if I trade and they have a spot removal spell, they're still dead. So I guess I'll trade here, not take any trample damage. All right, we did it. So Rusa Drakes for the win. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Bit of early removal, followed by kicked Roost and a kicked into the Royal. I guess we'll kill Whisper Squad here before it gets a second copy. I think I still want to keep up Heartless Act and then we can play Temple next turn and still have a 2 mana instant available. So our opponent on Mono Black. Adventures a Falmar Knight. Yeah, I guess keeping an author into the Royal could be okay. Although we already have one. Maybe I should dig towards more uh, action spells like maybe Seagate Stormcaller or an extra Rusa Drakes. Acquisitions experts. That's fine. I guess we'll discard a Heartless Act. And then do I want to cling to dust anything? So 
So now we can start making some Drake tokens to manage the board somewhat. And Mono Black shouldn't have too many ways of dealing with our enchantments. So, don't really want to bounce any of the opponent's creatures since they both have some sort of ETB value. So instead I can cling to dust their thirst, I suppose, to draw a card. And then play an extra squad and search up a second copy, perhaps. Could also put Lurus in hand. Although I would prefer to do that in the same turn where we can maybe play Lurus in case my opponent has some discard spells. We'll take one. And then... Is it time for opts? I guess so. Thirst's probably okay, although we have so much removal already. Can maybe deal with the Planeswalker. And then I'll send one squad, or I could keep both back to double block experts. Sure. And then we can either into the royal or search up double squad. And that's fine. And Grim Dancer, that's fine as well. Although we have to be careful that Heartless Sag doesn't actually deal with Grim Dancers since it has a lifelink and a menace counter on it. Still a fine target for Into the Royal, but I suppose we could just get double squad and then Into the Royal in our own turn. That way we don't accidentally draw another Whisper Squad. Don't want extinction events at this point. And we'll start attacking. Village rides to draw two. Opponent could have their own extinction event here that they're trying to set up. Replace Grim Dancer instead. Make that two. Find target for a kicked thirsts. And another Whisper Squad, which I suppose we could Heartless Act. I mean, I could go for Extinction Event on odds. I do lose all my Whisper Squads in the process. So maybe that's not worth it. Another village rights? Nope. Alright, so step one. I guess Thirst uh, Grim Dancer. Alright, so they had a Malachi Rebirth that they didn't want to use on their Whisper Squad. Fair enough. So now, Extinction Events is starting to look a little bit better. Could also attack with all and then Village rides the one they block. But I guess we can also just block with the Whisper Squads and kind of take it from there. So 
So I guess for now I could block like this. And just trading off seems reasonable enough. Alright, opponent's gonna eliminate one of them. So I could either into the Royal the opponent's Grim Dancer, although it's without kicker, or I can village rights. Alright. So that happens. They had another eliminate. Fair enough. Well, now I have no qualms about casting extinction events. And our opponent concedes. All right, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Got a little bit of everything. I guess what we don't have is removal, so maybe want to scry towards Heartless Act or Bloodchief's Thirst. And for now... I guess I want to opt, maybe playing Island in case I find a Whisper Squad. Another Village Rights instead. We'll wait on playing a Kicked Roost and then we've got an Into the Royal as well. Opponent on a Mono White Life Gain deck. Probably just put Lurse in hand. So we're off to a pretty slow start, but hopefully we can get back into it here. Just gotta dodge a Heliod. They might have a Skyclave Apparition to exile my Roost of Drakes. Interesting attack with the Alsaid. Yeah, if they have a trick, they can show it. A Light of Hope to put a counter on it. That's acceptable. And another Alsaid. Anything else? Another Light of Hope to destroy my Roost. Alright, it's a bit of a sandbag. But we can get it back with Lurus. Could go Lurus. Play one mana Roost out of the graveyard. I suppose keep up Village Rites. Or play another one mana Roost and then next turn my Into the Royal will make two Drakes. Although I can still potentially do that next turn. So I guess I like the idea of keeping a village rights in case they have a removal spell for my lures here. And yep, there's a glass casket. Could have also saved my Lurus to maybe free it with Into the Royal. But I don't expect to get too many things back out of the graveyard. And Extinction Event's looking pretty nice. Especially after my opponent plays Speaker. So, yeah, Extinction Event on Odd. And then Heartless Act can kill Duxos. That's not really going to help.
And then I guess we can opt as well here. Another thirst I'll keep. And then I want to play these kicked just so we can start making more drakes. Savior is acceptable. Yeah, I guess we can village rights. Just want to be mana efficient. And then I can play squad, activate squad while keeping up into the royal. Get in for two. But our opponent's gonna need something pretty special to get back into it. Maybe like a Legion Angel to get more Legion Angels could be a start. Stormcaller is also nice. Yeah, for now, probably just keep killing creatures and making drakes. And we should have another Whisper Squad in the deck. Our opponent did gain a lot of life, so it's gonna take a second to kill them. Can also enter the royal to bounce my own rooster drakes. Just so we can uh, replay it with kicker. Alright. I guess storm caller and then kicked royal. Bouncing my own roost. And I guess priest. And then I guess we'll play one since we have a bunch more kicker cards anyway. Alright, this should be pretty trivial. Yeah, that extinction event definitely bailed us out. Sweet. So yeah, the combo of Stormcaller plus Village Rites is kinda the backbone around which I try to build the deck and Roos of Drake seemed like a nice inclusion, especially since it combines nicely with Lurus. If you're playing against a mill deck, you can still potentially get it back from the graveyard and uh, plays well with the other kicker cards that you wanted to play anyways. So while this may not be the best deck in standard, it can definitely hold its own, especially against opposing creature decks. Gonna struggle a bit more against opposing ramp decks or control decks that can go over the top. Maybe land an Ugin the Spirit Dragon. That card is gonna be difficult to interact with outside of Blood Chief's Thirst and maybe a bit of hand disruption. But yeah, overall I've been having a lot of fun combining Stormcaller with all sorts of cheap spells in standard. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.